Wimbledon. I'm Danny Esmo. Paul Rodriguez. And welcome to this edition of WBLN for today, March 6, 2018. During the week of March 12th through 16th, our school will be celebrating Ignatian Week. This week will focus on celebrating our Ignatian identity and how our Ignatian ideals help to form strong moral men for others. There will be different events planned for the week, which will include a school-wide mass to begin the week on Monday, March 12th. The Commitment Mass for Christian Life Community members will be held on Tuesday, March 13th. Students will also participate in a Run to the Fire Assembly on Wednesday, March 14th. Parents are invited to experience the richness of Ignatian spirituality by attending a special hour of prayer in the Chapel of Our Lady from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Thursday, March 15th. Teacher Appreciation Day will also be celebrated on this day, and an opportunity for middle school students to participate in different works of service will conclude Ignatian Week on Friday, March 16th. Ignatian Week is a special time to celebrate our Catholic Jesuit identity and reflect on the many ways we try to live our mission at Belen, said Assistant Principal to the Middle School, Patricia A. Bustamante. I hope this week reignites the fire within us all. We continue to work towards creating a more just and loving world. We encourage our entire school community to celebrate with us, to learn more about the Society of Jesus and what it means to be open to growth, loving, religious, intellectually competent, and committed to doing justice, following the steps of our founder, St. Ignatius. Let us come together to share in our very own special Ignatian traditions and history. President Trump's deadline to describe DACA is Monday, and we have Brandon Luffy here in the studio to tell us more. Hey guys. All right, so President Trump's deadline to scrap DACA was yesterday, and the program protects people known as dreamers, undocumented immigrants who arrived in the U.S. as children, but the court actions are putting a deadline on hold, giving lawmakers more time to come up with a solution while dreamers are left in limbo. These are the faces of dreamers. Amrit Paul is one of 2,550 DACA recipients born in India. Christine is one of the 7,060 recipients born in South Korea. And Oscar is one of the 544,150 recipients born in Mexico. Monday was supposed to be a doomsday for the program that allows them and nearly 700,000 others to be in the United States legally. President Trump set March 5th as the end of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. I have love for these people, and now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. But they didn't. They didn't. He has a heart that beats, but that doesn't mean anything. Everyone's hearts can beat. But can he relate to us? It almost feels like, like we're just a game. You know, like this is one big chess game for them. According to a lawsuit filled in New York against the Department of Homeland Security, the March 5th memo would have meant 1,400 DACA recipients will lose their legal status every working day. But the Supreme Court stayed out of the dispute, which allowed a federal court ruling that the memo could not be enforced to stand while the case goes through the courts. It means DACA recipients are left in limbo. Amrit Paul has been the family translator, a second mother to her sister, and an income earner all the while attending college. Like, people think just because we're here, we have all these benefits and we're, you know, leeching off the government, but it's like, we don't have Medi-Cal. Like, half of my mouth is, like, rotting. As a DACA recipient, recipient she is not, is not eligible, eligible for government medical insurance programs or federal financial aid for school. I'm emotional because some days it feels like our sacrifices aren't enough. And our trauma isn't enough. Oscar was his high school class president, but then his father got deported. Since then, he's had to work up to four jobs at a time to help his mother feed a family of six. I worked in the swap meet, taco stand. I worked in a food restaurant, just about anything, just to make sure my family has food on the table. He now manages work and college. Christine got into the college of her dreams. Her father tried to pay for it, but that dream eventually died with no financial aid. At 25, she now works at the Korean Resource Center, hoping to make life better for other immigrants like her. She says politicians have failed them. Activists are still marking Monday with demonstrations and advocacy programs. Hundreds of DACA supporters are expected to march in Washington to push for action. For WBLN Reporting, I'm Brandon. Activists are marking yesterday with demonstrations and advocacy campaigns. Hundreds of DACA supporters are expected to march in Washington to push for action. Now back to you guys at the desk. For the first time since taking power, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has met with South Korean officials. The delegation includes the head of South Korea's spy agency and its national security chief. South Korea says the meeting lasted over four hours. North Korean media reports Kim had a, quote, open-hearted talk with the envoys who gave him a letter from South Korean President Moon Jae-in.
Hey guys, here's your screw for today. The Blind Jesuit chess team competed in 2018 Scholastic Chess State Championship in Orlando, fielding teams in both the Open and Under 1100 divisions. For the first time in Blind Chess history, the Wolverines have placed in the Open division, coming in second place with a team score of 10.5 points. Contributing to the team's achievement were seniors Justin Izquierdo with three wins and Connor Yurkun with two wins and a draw. Juniors Brandon Villa with a win and two draws and Carlos Ariza with a win. Sophomore Miguel Lombardi with a win and a draw, and freshman Adrian Pavida with two wins and two draws. Many of the team's wins came against opponents with low ratings between 400 and 600 points higher than themselves. Also participating in a team effort in the under 1100 division with a team total of seven points were seniors Andrew Birch with a win and three draws, and Rafael Yanesa with two wins and a draw, and freshman Jonathan Gomez with a win and two draws. Andrew Birch achieved a new personal best performance, losing only one game in the tournament. The team now sets its sights on the 2018 Scholastic National Champions in late April in Columbus, Ohio. Here's Marcos De La Hose with this week's Showbiz Spotlight. Best Director and Best Picture honors went to Shape of Water. The Shape of Water. Yes, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway made sure that was the right envelope this time. It was Francis McDormand. If I may be so honored to have all the female nominees in every category stand with me. Who created the moment Hollywood will talk about, not just because she won Best Actress for her work in three billboards outside Edding, Missouri, but because she called on entertainment executives to turn the Me Too movement into tangible results. Everybody look around, ladies and gentlemen, because we all have stories to tell and projects we need financed. Her fellow cast member Sam Rockwell took home Best Supporting Actor. Gary Oldman's portrayal of Winston Churchill in Darkest Hour earned him the Best Lead Actor Award. Allison Janney won Best Supporting Actress for her role in I, Tonya. And Jordan Peele made history as the first black artist to win Best Original Screenplay for his social thriller, Get Out. I thought no one would ever make this movie. Political themes were pervasive throughout the night. To all the dreamers out there, we stand with you. They even made it to a musical performance. Tell the NRA they in God's way. And to the people of Parkland, we say, I say. Host Jimmy Kimmel made sure to balance those moments, like with the promise of a jet ski to the winner giving the shortest speech. Costume designer Mark Bridges, bring it out. He and Helen Mirren delivered on that promise. For WLN, I'm Marcos de Laos. Thank you, Mackie. And before we go, remember that there are going to still be showings of the Hunchback of Notre Dame this weekend on Friday and Saturday. Now with that, let's bring you weather and sports after these messages. Hey, good morning, Wolverines. It's looking really great out there weather-wise. It's a little chilly for March, but on the bright side, the sun is going to be out all day with a 0% chance of rain. Looking at the forecast for today, we're going to have uh, highs in the lows of 80s and uh, lows in the low 60s, and with some relative humidity at 53%, and like I said, zero precipitation. Now, that's going to change uh, coming in tomorrow, where we're going to have some scattered thunderstorms with the highs in the high 80s and lows in the low 50s. That's going to clear up for the rest of the week where we're going to have a little more chilly weather in the low 70s with lows in the low 50s. And now that is all for weather. Let's move it on to sports. Good morning, Wolverine Nation. The Belen JV baseball team bet West, beat Westminster Academy by a score of 7-4. to four. Esteban Rodriguez, Andrew Lazar led them to the win. The varsity baseball team has their home opener against Seacrest at 3.30. The varsity track and field team finished 6th place in the, at the Sam... Burley Invitational that was held at Tropical Park this past Friday and Saturday. Joshua Collins was the sole event winner for the Wolverines. He won the 1600 run in a season best 420 that came in in the fourth place together with Cesar Aguzzi, Henry Souza, and Sebastian Roa. Roa also placed fourth in the 1600. Donald Cheney also came in second in the high jump with a score with a 6 8 high jump. Carlos Enrique Sosa in the pole vault also won. The varsity water polo team will be playing in the Wildcat Invitational, being held in Orlando. The varsity wrestling team will be participating in the state championships at 12 p.m. and 7.15 p.m. The middle school 
tennis team plays at Gulliver. The match time is at 4 p.m. Thank you, Pinto. That's all for today's news. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for our latest news and pictures. I'm Raul Rodriguez. From everyone here, thanks for watching, and stay golden, Wolverines.